Jesse here with another week of Kidopolis. Um, it is a beautiful day outside, so I decided to do this outside for now. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. It's the beautiful month of May, and this is our last Sunday in May. May, we have been talking about how to get unstuck when we're in sticky situations, when things are seeming hard, when we don't want to finish what we started. How do we get unstuck? We don't give up. We don't give up. How do we do that? We have determination. Sorry about that voice, you guys. It just came out of nowhere. Deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. So important. You have to make the decision. That's on you, right? To finish, you have to decide to finish what you started. And what is that? That's what determination is. Are we on our own if, if we're making the decision on our own? Does that mean if, if we start something um, and it's hard that we're stuck by ourselves and we are the only ones who can get ourselves unstuck? No, we make the decision to get unstuck, but we have a lot of help. That's what we've been talking about this month is how we get unstuck, what the help comes from. So this week in particular is keep going even when you have questions. There's so many questions that you can come up when you're doing anything in life. Whether it's cooking dinner, whether it's building something, um, maybe it's a new board game, maybe it's talking to somebody about Jesus, maybe it's talking to God about your own faith. So many questions that we can either choose to stop because we're confused, or we can choose to ask a question and keep going. So that's what we're going to talk about this week. I am going to tell you um, a short little Bible story. M let me tell you how this, this week's going to go. I'm going to tell you a short little Bible story. Um, I'm going to tell you about something special we have going on this week. Woo, just wait for it. We are going to review all of the stories that we've done this month because you might have questions about them. And if we have questions, we need to ask them so that we can keep going, okay? Um, and then we're going to do our memory verses, and then we're going to pray. All right, are you guys with me? Are we good? Let's do it. Okay, so this Bible story, we are still in the book of Acts. Acts. And this is chapter 8. Chapter 8 in the book of Acts. And we're going to start at verse 26, okay? This is about a man named Philip, and he came across this man. Um, well, actually, the reason why he came across the man was because an angel of the Lord told him to go down a certain road. So Philip was just living his life, doing what he needed to do for the Lord, and an angel said, hey, go down that road. So Philip said, okay, I'll go down that road. He went down that road, and he found this really important man. He was sitting in a chariot, a chariot, like a fancy doodle car. Like imagine the coolest car you've ever seen. And that's probably what this guy was sitting in like back then. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Um, and he saw that he was reading out of the book of Isaiah. Miss Jessie always talks about where the books are in the Bible, right? So here I am in Acts. And if you look at my Bible, you see it's, there's a lot more over here. I'm kind of towards the end of the Bible or more towards the end than the beginning, right? That's because we're in the New Testament. We're after the Gospels. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which talk about Jesus' life and what he did while he was on earth. And the book of Acts comes after that. And it talks about um, kind of the stuff that happened right after that, what the disciples did after Jesus died and he rose again. And he said, go, go make a lot of you guys. Go, go make a lot. So that's where we are. But this dude, he was reading in Isaiah, which, somewhere over here, where's Isaiah? It's Old Testament. Do, 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 do. I don't know, Miss Jessie's not good at memorizing where they are. I always get confused. Isaiah's one of the ones, too, that I always think are in the, in the New Testament, but they're not. So luckily, I can look at my handy-dandy table of contents. It's fine. It's fine. In my Bible, it's on page 375. Okay. I was kind of close. 370. 
Oh, see? That's what tripped me up. I was looking before. Proverbs. No, it's after. It is after. Okay, so here's Isaiah. This is where this man was reading. And it did not, it wasn't all in one book like this, okay? But this is the, I want you to look at it like, they were here in the time of um, the church, right? This is where they were in the time. But he was reading about stuff back here. Okay? And this is what he read. The man in the chariot read. Um, well, actually, first, sorry, I forgot this part. Philip said, hey, do you understand what you're reading there? Because, like, raise your hand if you've read the Bible before, and you're like, what did I just read? What does this mean? Why is it hard to understand if it's so important? Jacob's not raising his hand because he's holding the camera, but I know he's raising his hand in his head. And I hope you guys are raising your hand because I feel like that's everybody, right? Okay, so Philip asked that dude that question. He said, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy said, how can I? Unless someone explains it to me. So we invited Philip to come up in the chariot and sit with him. So this is what he read. This is out of the book of Isaiah. Um, if you're interested in the exact verse, chapter 53, verses 7 and 8. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. So this guy asked Philip, he's like, who is this talking about? Is he talking about himself? Or someone else? What? Who's, who's he in this? And Philip was like, it's Jesus, bro. Talking about Jesus. Remember that guy that did all those things and then he died and he came back? Um, and he told him all the things, all the good stuff about Jesus. So, remember, way back here, 375 in my Bible, right? Talking about Jesus, but it's applying to right here in time. Okay? So, after that, that's not the end of that's not the end of the story. They were traveling together, and then the guy said, "Hey, look at that water. Why shouldn't I be baptized?" So, he they stopped their chariot. They were traveling in the chariot, and they went down to the water, and, and Philip baptized him. And something kind of weird happened after that. Philip disappeared, um, but the guy. He went about his way rejoicing and probably telling other people about Jesus. So that story of Philip and the man in the chariot is a great example of why it is so important to ask questions, especially when it comes to your faith. It's okay to ask questions. Philip saw somebody who he thought might need some help reading the Bible, so he asked him if he needed help. You could do that. Um, the man didn't understand what he was reading, so he kind of asked, right? And then he learned so much. He learned so much about it. He learned the good news. And then he asked a follow-up question. Why shouldn't I be baptized? Maybe the question for you is, should I be baptized? That's something that you want to talk to your parents about. And you can talk to me or Mr. Jacob or any of the grown-ups in the church about. Definitely start with your parents, okay? All right. So, questions are so important. And it's not just important to ask questions between people that you see at church or your parents or friends. Um, it's really important to ask questions from God because God wants us to have a relationship with him. He wants us to talk to him. And sometimes when we ask him questions, he's going to give us really good answers, right? And the more questions that we ask him, the more answers that we get. Um, so when we're praying, make sure you ask questions and make sure you listen for the answer for what he gives you. And now comes the surprise for this week. I have no rhythm. I'm sorry. Um, this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm not sure if it's... I always get confused about when it's daylight savings time or not. 3 p.m. this week. Um, Miss Jessie, Mr. Jacob, we're going to meet you for a really quick session on Zoom. I'm sure your parents have used it. We've been using it for church. Um, if you have not used it yet, what a great opportunity. But we're going to go through some questions together. And we're going to pray together and um, just chit-chat. 
So I have a couple questions that I'm going to have preset that we can ask together. But also, if you want to bring any of your questions, that's great too. So when you're watching this, it'll be tomorrow and then the three days after that. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern, Zoom. I'm going to post a link on the discussion board and Jacob will email you the link as well. Does that sound good? Does that sound great? Perfect, because we have some questions for God. We want to get them answered, okay? We're going to quickly go over each of the stories that we went over for the month of May for our um, unit on getting unstuck and having determination, deciding that what, what you've started is worth finishing. We're going to start with week one, and this is way back um, after all the good stuff happened on Easter Sunday, after Jesus was crucified and he rose again, um, some he told some women to tell the disciples to go to this mountain in Galilee so he could tell them the plan. I imagine it went just like this. I think Jesus had a very similar setup. Crayola markers, a poster board, and he wrote this here to make it easy for them. I'm just kidding. All right, before I even read, I know the answer to the first question, who? That is obviously Jesus, right? Duh, that's always the answer. But just so we know, for sure, I'll read the Bible, what it says in here. This is, most of what we're going to be going over is in the book of Acts, but we are in the Gospel of Matthew right now. This is twenty, um, chapter 28, verse 18. He said, <clears throat> All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. See, Jesus. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end. Uh-oh. Oopsie doodles. The who? The who? In the plan at this point, sorry, I have messy handwriting. Wasn't Jesus who had to carry out the plan? Those disciples had to. His friends. His disciples had to carry out his plan. Um, the ones who were there in the mountain in Galilee, and then the people that they talked to, and the people that they talked to, and the people that they talked to. All right, next. Sorry about that. Sorry, Miss Jessie misled you. Is what? Well, that's in that too, right? He told them what to do. He said to do do. Sorry about that. Well, I was in. He said to spread the word about him that he is the savior to tell them the good news. So, spread, start spreading the news. Don't listen to me sing. It's worse than my drawing. He said, spread the word. Yay, Jesus. Okay? Who does that? The disciples. What are they going to do? Spread the word. All right. Next. The next question. I think we're actually going to skip over where and go to when, just so it makes sense time-wise. Um, now we're in the book of Acts, okay? What is this plan that Jesus has? He did this amazing thing. He rose up from the dead. He did some pretty amazing stuff. And he's just going to leave them, right? Wrong. Wrong. All right. When is in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. We'll read that to you. Here we go. <clears throat> he said... So this is, they were in a different place now. They were in Galilee, now they're just outside of Jerusalem. They're on a hill now, and before they were on a mountain, it's a whole thing. Okay, but he said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, when you have, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So... Kind of, we got a little bit of when was a few days, right? Few days, but, but it 
was more, the more important part of that was when the Holy Spirit came, right? Holy Spirit. Once I got that Holy Spirit, they were going to go to town of spreading the word, right? Um, this is going to be a green fire because the Holy Spirit is kind of like fire. Helps us out with stuff. That's fire. Next is why. We have the who, we have the what, we have the when. And now the disciples, they ask this question. Um, they ask Jesus, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And I'm going to tell you the answer exactly what he said in, in a minute. But basically he said no. And that tells us a lot about the why. Because we love Jesus, right? Right? We love Jesus. That's why we do it. But also, Jesus loves us. It goes both ways. And Jesus wants everyone that we, he wants it to be everyone, as many people as possible. Which brings me to my where. I'm going to go back here. He said, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He said, I'm going to write the whole earth. Here's an earth. It's going to be a really sad Looking Earth. <laughs> Island. The whole Earth. The en both ends of it. Uh, yeah, there we go. All around the Earth. Everywhere. That's where the message needs to get sent, right? Okay. So, we have everything that we need for the plan, right? Who, what, where, when, and why. And after that, Jesus said, all right, keep going, keep doing what you need to do. You have the plan. Um, and then they left. And then, hmm, can you think of anything missing from these questions? Oh, my goodness. How on earth are we going to do this? How are we going to get to the ends of the earth? How are we, the disciples, going to do, live like Jesus and do things to spread his amazing word? What, how are we going to be able to teach people about all of the love that Jesus has for them? That's a big question. But if you think about it, it was kind of answered when um, Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit coming. The Holy Spirit, like I said, it's a fire. Now it's a pink and green fire. It looks really, really good. It gives us, um, gives our soul some power. <clears throat> it gives our heart some power. Things that we didn't think maybe would be possible, um, it helps us too. It helps things, it helps us, like, just think of it as like power, like maybe putting gasoline in your car. I'm sure there's better, better analogies. That's what Miss Jessie has right now. So all of this week one, is keep going even when it seems impossible. And week two, when we learn a little bit more about this guy right here, I'm gonna tell you about that in like two seconds. Sorry that our week one recap went so long. It's just so important that we know the plan. The plan is so important for me and for you and that's why we're here, okay? Week two, we're gonna go a little bit quicker but we're gonna talk about that how, the Holy Spirit. And um, how God gives you what you need to keep going. This is going to be in Acts chapter 2. And it's going to talk about, this is the kind of the, um, the main idea is Pentecost. Okay, so Peter and some disciples, there was a bunch of them, not just three. They were in this house. They were eating probably more than apples. That's what Miss Jessie drew. <clears throat> I'm going to read to you what happened. Like I said, Acts chapter 2. Do, 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 do. I'm going to grab this great marker for the first thing. It says, Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. This is violent wind. Okay. Came in. And then, 
what happened next. This one, this is kind of creepy. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Tongues of fire. Oh my goodness. And then what happened? Was that it? Is it just a really cool display? Nope. <clears throat> All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They were speaking in different languages after the Holy Spirit showed up. And it made quite the announcement. So after this happened, and all these people were able to speak all of these languages that they hadn't been able to before, they went out and they were going to talk to this crowd over here. Peter, in particular, decided that he was kind of going to take the lead. And here's the thing. Peter did not speak their language before. Galilean, maybe? Galilean? Something like that. I'm not sure on the exact pronunciation. I don't have that particular gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, but he decided to talk to them and tell them about Jesus. <clears throat> and here is what he said. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And then they said, okay, well, dude, what do we do? And he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So this guy, he a miracle just happened. He told them what to do. Do you know what they did? Do you know? They did it. A lot of them got baptized. Do you know how many? How many do you have here? Three, six, nine. Uh, three of them. Th 30 of them. Three... 3,000, I don't know how well you can see it, 3,000 people got baptized because one guy used his gift of the Holy Spirit to do the plan. How cool is that? God gives you what you need to keep going. Week three was about keep going even when it gets tough. We're going to talk about Peter and John who were just enjoying a little stroll one day. They were headed to the temple and they saw this man... Look at him. He's laying on a rug. He's sad. He can't walk. He wasn't able to walk for a really long time. And um, that man, he saw these two men walking by and he asked them for some money. And Peter, this is from Acts chapter 3, verse 6. He said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. That man, guess what happened? Not only did he get off his mat and walk, do you know what he did? He got off that mat and he jumped for joy. Yay! He was so happy. Now, since this amazing thing happened, this man who was on the mat, now jumping for joy and walking around, he grew quite the crowd. And when the crowd came, Peter was like, hey guys, hello, do you not know what this is? It's Jesus. We have God from our fathers, um, and he gave glory to Jesus. And then Jesus gave us faith, and through that faith, we were able to heal this guy. And the people, like, the people who are in charge, especially the people who are, like, in charge of the temple, the Sanhedrin, weren't happy about this. You know what they had? Peter and John went to jail. Look how sad they are. Oh no. And when they were in jail, jail, they were asked to testify. They were asked to say, explain themselves. Why are they saying this crazy thing that was against what the people of the Sanhedrin thought was the God that they knew in their special book, their, their holy documents, right? They're like, what are you guys talking about? <clears throat> so Peter went and talked to the guys and he told them everything about Jesus. And he just told the truth about Jesus' life and about the prophets before him, all the way back to uh, Moses, way back, way, way back. And then the Sanhedrin were like, 
Well, you know what? We can't really have any reason to keep him, especially that guy's walking around, so they let him go. So now, we're just gonna erase those lines. Peter and John were out walking around again in the crowd group, and they were like, whew, what happened? You guys were like, you helped that guy heal, and you went to jail, and now you're out, what is? And they told them what happened. And he told them how important it was to repent and be baptized, that just like the faith in Jesus healed that man and was able to help him walk, um, our faith in Jesus can heal us of our sins. So, that crowd was there that day. Remember how we talked about how there were 3,000 people that um, from the Pentecost that were baptized? Now, that number grew to, I'll write it up here so you can see it better, 5,000. Oh my goodness. 5,000 people. It got really tough for a minute. It got really tough. They were in jail. But Peter knew his stuff. And he knew his faith. And God gave that to him. He gave him Jesus and he gave him faith and he gave him knowledge in the word. And he was able to not only get out of the situation he was in, but put all of these people in a much better situation. Pretty cool, huh? Week four, it has honestly what has been my favorite story to teach so far, and I just discovered how much I love to teach it. Um, I think it's a beautiful story because it teaches us to keep going because God knows the end of the story. And in this case, he actually showed it to somebody. So we have Stephen. It looks just like him, doesn't it? He was kind of, he wasn't really a superhero, but he took care of people. He took care of God's people. Um, and he was a very smart man. He knew the words of the, the word of God and he shared it with people. The religious leaders did not like this guy. In fact, they came up with a plan to tell lies about Stephen to put him into jail. And they succeeded. They got Stephen into jail and then when he had to testify, they're like, hey, are these things that they're saying about you true? That you're like saying bad things about God and Stephen was like not exactly um, I want you to know the truth about Jesus Jesus is part of the big plan that God set in motion way back starting with like Abraham and he told them basically all of the stories that they knew in their religion and how connected to Jesus they did not like that they did not like that so Stephen got a little angry at that point, and he basically said, why are you resisting this, you guys? Why are you resisting the story of Jesus and the Holy Spirit? You guys don't obey. What is your deal? Um, well, they definitely didn't like that. So they decided to throw rocks at him, really bad rocks, until he died. Um, but before that happened... Stephen, this is the best part. I know it's kind of a sad story, but it's actually kind of a beautiful story. All this happened, Stephen, doop, 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 was given a vision of heaven. I don't know exactly what heaven is going to look like, but I know that this is what we're all going to feel is a lot of love. Stephen knew what it looked like at that moment because God came and gave him that exact vision. That was in... Let me see here. If you're interested, it is uh, Acts chapter 7, verse 56. Look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. So the people were like, oh my gosh, doesn't this guy ever stop? They're mad. They threw the rocks at him. But Stephen, even after this, he got sent to jail for people lying about him. He was telling the truth about his faith. And um, he was still getting rocks thrown at him to die. But listen to his last words. Listen to his last words. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. The people who were just completely ignoring what he said and denying what he said and not wanting to be a part of God's story, he's like, hey, God, help them out. How amazing is that? So keep going. Because God knows the end of the story. Even when things are like cuckoo bananas crazy, God knows the end of the story and he's pointing you towards the direction 
of the most beautiful ending, okay? May had five Sundays, so now we're on week five, which is keep going even when you have questions. We learned about Philip and a man in Ethiopia who is sitting, reading the book of Isaiah, um, and Philip had a question for him. He said, hey, do you know what you're reading? And the guy was like, hey, can you help me understand it? So they read it together. And even though it was in the book of Isaiah from like a long, long time before this, it was about, you know who it's about, right? It's Jesus. And, but the Ethiopian man, he didn't know that. He said, hey, who is this about? And Philip told him. And they had a pretty good little friendship going and they were walking or in their chariot. I can't really exactly remember what. It's in Acts chapter eight if you want to read it. But then they saw some water and the Ethiopian man said, hey, why shouldn't I get baptized? And then Philip was like, hey, yeah, why not? So, <laughs> so many questions that popped up, right, that are in the pages of our Bible. So many questions from people who were important enough to put in their lives in this book. They, they had questions that they needed answered, and I'm sure you do too. I have questions probably every minute of every day for God. So it's important to keep going even when you have questions. And I'm going to say, when you have questions, ask. Ask your questions. Miss Jessie, I don't understand what we just read. Hey, Mom, can we talk about baptism? Hey, can you explain what communion is? Why are people sad right now? Why do I need to read my Bible? Why do I need to do my memory verse? It's okay to ask questions, guys. Make sure you do. And don't forget, you don't have to ask me or your parents or somebody who you get to see every day in your life. You can ask God. And God wants to hear from you. He wants to hear your questions and he wants to answer them. He wants to be so close to you and he wants everybody on this earth to be close to him. So he wants to help you do it in any way that he can. You better ask those questions, okay? All right, it's memory verse time. So excited for memory verses. They're so important because I don't know about you, but I don't carry my Bible everywhere. Luckily it's on my phone, but maybe your parents don't let you have a phone. It's important to have memory verses here because even if you do carry those around everywhere, you might look a little funny if you have, you're like, I know this verse, I know the perfect thing to say to this person who is struggling or has questions or needs help or just needs a little encouragement. Hang on one second, okay? Hang on. Where is Isaiah? I can't find Isaiah. Is it before Psalm or after Psalm? I can't remember. So that's why we do memory verses. That's one of the reasons. It's, it's good for us. So we keep it here. We keep it here. All right. So... If you do your memory verses, I just want to remind you, you can message them to me via Facebook, you can email them to us in a video, or since we're doing Zoom this week, um, if anybody at the end of the Zoom call, I will say, hey, does anybody have a memory verse they want to do? If you do your memory verse, you get a treat from Miss Jessie dropped off at your house. Germ free. Got it? All right, this is our older kid verse, or it's a little bit of the longer verse. This is what I'm calling the versity. <laughs> All right, this is Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Don't forget, you can always pause if you want to stare at the screen for a while, okay? Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we do not give up, if we don't give up. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. We'll gather a crop. Don't get tired of doing good. Say, say it forwards and backwards. That might help. That's Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. All right, this is for my JVs, my junior versities. This is, if you just, if you look at that verse and you're like, I am not in school. It is summer break. What does she think I'm going to do? Memorizing like five lines of text. 
I got a verse for you, okay? This is from 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1, 3. As for you, brothers, do not grow tired of doing good. Wanted to make sure I had that just right. That one is simple and to the point. As for you, brothers, do not grow tired in doing good. What a perfect verse. What, I mean, it's so simple and straightforward and to the point. Can you imagine? Because sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. Actually, a lot of the times it's hard to do the right thing. Sometimes it's not fun to do the right thing. Um, so can you imagine just seeing somebody, let's say, let's say you see your little brother or sister and they're like, ugh, I do not want to clean my room today. I am tired and I just want to have fun in this room. So you go up to them and you say, as for you, brother, <laughs> do not grow tired in doing good. That's from the Bible. In fact, it's from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. And I'm sure you can find yourself a ton of situations to say these, how many words? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven words. Eleven words, and I'm sure it applies to so many situations. Put it in your back pocket. I'm sure you're going to use it, okay? All right, prayer time! This week we have a prayer request um, from a mama who sent me a message and some pictures of one of my little buddies. Chase, hello, I hope you're feeling better. My little buddy broke his little wing. It's in a cast now, a yellow one. It looks really cool. So we are going to pray that that heals well and that Chase keeps that smile on nice and bright through the whole summer. And that it just, man, I hope it heals really fast and really well and that that cast keeps you smiling. All right, so we're gonna pray for that and some other things right now. Here we go. As always, don't forget you can send me your prayer request and I am here for you um, whenever you need. I do sleep sometimes. So like maybe not in the middle of the night, but I'll get to it in the morning. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you for a beautiful month. Thank you for my friends. Um, thank you for giving me such good stuff to teach them about. And thank you for preparing their hearts, getting their hearts ready to learn about you and your work and what our work is. Um, I thank you for all my friends that I miss so much. Um, and I pray that they're having a great time even when things are a little strange, a little different than usual, a little different of a summer vacation. But I pray that they're all doing great um, and we continue to do great. I hope anyone who is ill heals quickly. Lord, I pray for any broken hearts this week. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of sadness um, and a lot of anger. And Lord, I ask that you give those people comfort and peace and that myself and my friends who are watching this um, and the people around me are people who work and live for you, who help others find that peace. I pray that you give us everything that we need um, so that this world can get unstuck out of this sadness and this anger um, and we can move on to somewhere unsticky. I pray for my friend Chase and his little broken arm. I pray that it heals quickly, it heals well, and that he has the best summer vacation. I pray that um, his cast reminds him of how strong he is and that even when things are broken that they can be fixed. And um, I just thank you so much for him. I thank you for his smile and his attitude, his great attitude and his loving heart. Um, Chase, I miss you and I love you. I hope you're doing well. Um, Lord, we love you so much and we thank you for everything that you've given us. We pray this all in your son's name, amen. Okay, ooh, it's bright out here. So I think that's all I have for today. Don't forget to send me your memory verses or you can give them to me on our Zoom calls. Look out for those links. We're gonna be meeting Monday, tomorrow, Tuesday, two days from tomorrow, Wednesday, when? I don't know, just kidding, three days from um, today. 
and then Thursday at 3 p.m., okay, guys? So let's do that, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. Bye.